Hi, my name is Francesca, and today I wanted to talk about React Router 4, which is the most recent version of React Router. So I wanted to start by talking about some of the history of React Routing, or, or routing in general, or specifically like our history with routing. So when we first learned routing, we learned it with the Express Router, and we would have to use GET requests for specific routes to render our content, and we passed it through to a rendering machine. Nunjucks usually is what we used. Um, and so it required writing a lot of HTML because we had to match up a lot of our variables from the back end with what we wanted it to look like on the front end. So we had to write a ton of HTML because we had to write a file for every single page we wanted to render, which made our code very inflexible, and it required um, storing them in a public folder to be statically served, which compromised the security of our applications because hackers could access anything we put inside these public folders and learn how our apps worked. So then React came along, and they designed a routing framework to be used with their front-end framework. And so this framework was URL-focused. It used declarative syntax and took advantage of component-based routes. The first version of React Router was released in 2015. And by the second version of React Router, the creators were very frustrated at the direction they'd taken because they ended up doing a lot of static routing. And they made a bunch of huge changes when they released React Router 3, and again when they released React Router 4. So React Router 3 has a lot of differences from React Router 4, and one of the biggest differences is that React Router 3 uses mostly static routing. So the routing is done in a separate file. It's not really a part of the app. It's kind of a separate thing that allows you to render everything you want in your app. And so with version 4, they wanted to make it much more dynamic so that the routing was actually more a part of the functionality of the app. Um, they also took away nesting. So in React Router 3, when we wanted to render, like if we had um, a general route and then we wanted to do like a user ID or something, we'd have to nest that route inside of a general like user's route and that could be like really confusing to read and hard to write. And so they took that away in React Router 4, but you could still nest routes in components themselves if you wanted. So they did keep the functionality of that, but took away some of the confusion of writing it. Um, another problem they faced with React Router 3 that they fixed in version 4 was that there was a lot of redundancies with the React Router framework. So in React Router 3, they used stuff like um, on enter, on leave. So whenever you would render your components, you would have these hooks. And that basically mimics all the stuff you do in your actual components, like the component will mount or did mount. So it was just like a lot of stuff that they redid and they didn't like that they were recreating things that already existed. So whenever they moved to version 4, they got rid of that. Um, and they also, so it's called React Router, but until version 4, it was actually a routing framework that was just designed to work with React. And until version 4, it wasn't its own router, but in version 4, they like made it its own router. So it was a lot more functional. And so React Router 4 works using some of these new components, like browser router, link, switch, and exact. So browser router is, it creates a history object that it uses to keep track of the current location of your app and it re-renders the application anytime that changes. And so this is different than React Router 3 in a lot of ways. Um, one of the main ways is that React Router 4, they made three different packages. So there's like a general React Router package, there's one for web applications specifically, and there's one for native applications. So this browser router um, history object is specifically made with web applications in mind. So it makes it really easy for you to um, know where your user has gone and what stuff, like if they hit the back button, where do they actually want to go and what do they want to see. So they also created a link property, which they, it kind of replaces the attributes that use the href tags to link pages to other pages. And so using the link, you don't have to use that whole tag and it will like kind of create that attribute tag for you. And they also created something called switch, which allows you to group your routes and it works by iterating over all of the routes inside of it, and it only renders the very first route that matches the current path name. So this can be really useful or really annoying, depending on what you want your app to do. Um, if you want to show more than one component on a page, it can be really useful to not use Switch, but if you want only one component, you would want to use it. And so it, Switch has to be used with the exact property, and it's going to break if you don't use that. And so you have to have one route that has to be an exact match. So if you like want to render a home page on a slash route, you have to use an exact or it will like think you want to render all these other things. So to demonstrate some of these new useful features, I wanted to give a brief demo of an app that I made. Um, it's a pretty basic app. It just shows you like Instagram accounts of puppies <laughs> based on their breeds. And so 
this is the app and some of the code I wrote to go with it. So it has a few different routes that you can see. There's like this general breeds route, and there's different routes nested inside of it, so you can go to different things and see different content. And so if we were to write this in React Router 3, it would look something like this, where we would have these nested routes for the different breeds, and we would have browser history instead of browser router. Um, but in React 4, we wrap everything inside of a browser router so that we have all of the history that we want. And then we render all of our routes here. So you could render them inside your specific components, but since my app is so simple and I like seeing all of the routes together, I decided to, to code it this way. And so you can see that there's a switch statement, there's some exact paths, and so I wanted to kind of break some of the things so you can see like what might be useful for different apps. So one example is if you take away the exact path, you're going to see that if you go to any of these breeds pages, they're always going to render this just slash breeds page. Because even though the URL is changing, it's going to match only the very first path inside this switch that matches. So it sees a slash breeds, and it knows it wants to render any just the slash breeds page, even if there's another backslash. And so another thing, if you take out all of the exacts, and you don't have any exact paths inside your switch, it's going to break like everything. And so it's only going to render this first component, the home page, no matter where you go on your app, which is kind of interesting. And then if you break it in a different way by taking away the switch, then you're going to see that there's going to be like a ton of components rendered on just one page. So we're going to get the not found page, which you should only get if you go to a URL that I didn't write a route for. Um, and you're also getting the welcome page because it's just for s the slash route. And so this route here matches slash, it matches breeds, and it matches this not found route, which doesn't have a path associated with it. Um, so in a tradition, like when you have a switch, it's going to know, since this is the last route, it's only going to render it if it doesn't find any of these other ones. But without the switch, it's going to say that matches too. So you're going to get a page not found route as well. And so those are some of the interesting features, I thought. It would be really interesting in a case where like, if you were displaying like, a band name or something and you wanted to do all of your albums, like maybe you would want to have some of the information for the band at the top and then you could go to different pages and have different content while still saving some of the things. Um, so I thought it could be useful in certain cases, but also like, could be pretty annoying. Um, so those are like, kind of the basics of how it works. And I use these sources to learn a lot about React Router 4. Um, React Training is really cool because they give you boilerplate for making your own really simple React Router app, and that's how I made this puppy app. Um, it's really, really easy. And then I also found um, a tutorial and some basics on these two blogs that I found very helpful. And so I hope you all learned a lot more about React Router, and thank you for listening. <laughs>